Fly a fair nation. Fly a fair nation. Thank you for tuning in to the Pointless Talks podcast. This week, we're going to discuss a few things. Um, last week, there was a huge win for the Caribbean LGBTQ community. For those who haven't heard, on Thursday, Trinidad and Tobago deemed the anti-buggery law illegal. Yep, that's the same law that's in place in Jamaica and so many other places that basically pars in people's sex life and says anal sex is banished. You're not allowed to do it. It's illegal. Um, Trinidad and Tobago Supreme Court ruled this last week. On Thursday, that was the final ruling that, you know, the buggery law, it's illegal. That's it. Big shout outs to activist Jason Jones and everyone else who was involved, who fought to make this happen. You know, the LGBTQ community, the Caribbean, we've been in celebration. I made a post about this on Instagram, and I think that's like one of my top liked <laughs> posts. And, you know, I just I'm really proud about that happening i'm really happy for them and you know it's just it's a big step because trinidad and tobago is one of the larger communities um larger caribbean islands and it's one of the most known caribbean islands so that's a big step for them and you know shout out to them go go growth (laughs) um on another note i saw a flyer on instagram calling out to lgbtq students finishing their last year at community colleges specifically um it was by someone that's trans. It's an undocumented trans student. That's who they're specifically targeting. Um, by my understanding, undocumented means that it's in reference to gender identity and the change not being on file in the system, in the legal system. You haven't gone through the steps to get your name changed, get your gender changed legally. Um, the ad states that... You know, if you're in your last year of community college, you can apply for this loan. It's a scholarship and um, applications are from March 1st, which is long past. But the deadline is from March 3rd. It says basically LGBTQ LGBTQ students, do you need help for your last year of college, community college? Go to the Point Foundation. That's who's administering it. So if anyone's listening that's interested or knows anyone who would benefit from this, the application deadline, like I said, is May 3rd. And you can apply on pointfoundation.org. It's point, P-O-I-N-T, like pointless talks, um, foundation.org. In other news, for those who don't know, Gilbert Baker, he it's the first anniversary of his death um, just passed on May 3rd, um, March 31st. He was 65 when he passed, and he's mostly known for creating the LGBT flag, the rainbow flag. <laughs> for those who didn't know, it just didn't just come out of nowhere. Someone actually designed it, sewed it, presented it. So um, that was just something that came up on my feed, and I was just like, damn, because I didn't even know that he passed. But, you know, I'm familiar with him because he's done things with Harvey Milk and a couple of other people he's flag and he's been in a couple other movies also but yeah there's that for those who don't know Gilbert Baker that's his name and he's he's ex-military also you know which <laughs> and he's gay as well but oh excuse me that's just one of those things <laughs> oh <laughs> that's just something that i saw that just b- caught my attention i was just like oh my gosh it's been a year already that's crazy um it's just fun in fact um in the german peasants war of 16th century the rainbow flag with the peasants boots was used as a sign of a new era of hope and social change the choice of the rainbow in the form of a flag harkens back to the rainbow as a symbol of biblical promise <laughs> According to the Bible, God first created the rainbow as a sign to Noah that there would never again be a worldwide flood, also known as the Rainbow Covenant. Fun fact. (laughs) I read that and I was just like, huh, the rainbow, the Bible. Interesting. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar. Uh, Young M.A. is directing a porno. (laughs) I saw this online and I was just like, huh it's lesbian porn of course i read up on it because i saw that and i was like that's an interesting lane for her to go into but she 
is directing and writing a porno on Pornhub. It's on the paid portion of it, though. So unless you live in one of those funny name places like Cummings, Georgia, or somewhere else that sounds sex related, you got to pay to watch it or someone's going to leak it somewhere. But it's basically about a virgin. <laughs> She's wonders like her friend buys her a ticket. I think it's called the gift. So her friends buys her a ticket to this sex place or whatever like a sex house type of thing like and she just has the option to go in different rooms and explore and try something lose her virginity figure out something and she ends up in like a six-person orgy lesbian orgy so it should be interesting if anyone watches it let me know how it goes i'm not paying for it but if someone leaks it i might click it who knows um there was an article i saw where a lady on the topic of porno rented out her home probably like an airbnb or something like that rented out her home and when she got back she realized that they used her home for a porn like they sh used it to shoot a porno which was technically in violation of their agreement because the agreement states that it shouldn't be used for um oh, what's the particular term it's for business purposes basically and because basically they can't get you paid to use her property so shooting a porno you're gonna get paid for so it's outside the terms also they caused damage to her property apparently she came back her pillows were soiled things were broken is it was disgusting so she's suing them and i was just like that is crazy how you just first of all if you're shooting a porno, if you're doing anything in someone's home that you're renting, if you're doing an Airbnb, whatever it is, like, think about the fact that if you don't clean up after yourself, someone else is cleaning up after you. Like, who raised y'all? Like, that's so nasty. Especially if you got, like, bodily fluids on people's, people's personal shit. Like, her friggin' pillows and her couch pillows, her decorations, like, her, like, that's fucked up, so... I mean, I hope she gets what she deserves because that that I mean, on top of it being outside of their agreement, like they have studios you can rent to shoot pornos like you can you could have done this another way. Like you didn't have to use someone's personal space to do this, especially without them knowing. But that's that um, <laughs> something I heard the other day that made me laugh because I've ever since I was little, I always thought it was funny hearing older women refer to their female friends as friend girl. Or like as opposed to girlfriend because of the stigma of it sounding like that's their romantic girlfriend. I've I've always felt a way about that because it's like, why do you go out of your way to say something that sounds so awkward because you don't want to be deemed as gay? Like, that's my take on it. That's why I think they do it. Why they would say friend girl instead of, oh, my girlfriend. Because my mom, personally, they say, she says, my girlfriend. And I know my mom's not gay. So I would not assume that she's saying my girlfriend that I love and I'm in love with or whatever. So I hear people say that. I'm just like, you sound dumb. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people have heard it also. But I was talking to someone, like an older one, probably like in her 40s or 50s or something like that. And she said, yeah, you know, my friend girl told me about this. And she said friend girl like three times. And I was just like, can you not? <laughs> like, can you stop saying that? And I feel like people are so like caught up on homosexuality and not being associated with homosexuality that they try to make something more than it is you get me like and i feel like that also takes an impact on the younger generation because if you're making such an effort to not sound a certain way or come off a certain way you're giving the impression to younger generation people that are around you that are younger that there's something wrong with saying girlfriend and it's not because even if you do have a girlfriend that you're romantically involved with, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I remember a time when, um, when I first, I shouldn't even say when I first came out, like my first lesbian relationship, I was very out and open. Like I was, I was rainbow flagging, kissing all over the internet, pictures, like all types of shit. Like I was, <laughs> I was out here, you know what I'm saying? And I remember one of my cousins who followed me on Facebook, she told somebody who told my mom that I had a girlfriend. And I was like, okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And my whole take on that was, this was after the whole 
telling my mom that obviously it's well after telling my mom you know that I'm gonna bring home my girlfriend one day or whatever so she probably already had that stuck in her mind like maybe she you know she might be gay but I had like she my mother brought it up to me she was like oh what is this I hear about you kissing a girl on the internet and I was like what are you talking about because I honestly didn't remember because like I said it's all over I was on tumblr at the time and all this shit so I'm like oh what did you see (laughs) but um yeah she brought it up to me she's like what is this I hear and I was like what are you talking about she's like oh so and so told me that and my literal response was they don't have a life why they worried about mine and she just looked at me she's like I'm just telling you what I heard and I was like okay and that was like the end of it so I just you know what I'm saying like and this person now has a child so I'm just like what are you teaching your child <laughs> you know what I'm saying like I, I always like to have the conversation with people about raising children and not feeding them negativity like you should let children come to their own decisions on who they are instead of trying to mold them into what you think is right of course you know teach them the good things don't kill don't steal don't lie whatever but where it comes to like accepting people and like just letting people be who they are like that's so important so like the same thing with the friend girl thing and you know what i'm saying being closed-minded like that's that's ridiculous. And to say that, I want to touch on like I my little sister lives in Jamaica. I have a little sister that's I have two little sisters, but the one I'm specifically referring to is 13. Um I was on Instagram the other day, I was talking to her and she goes to Holy Childhood, which is all girls school for those who don't know. And she you know you talk to people you always ask how school whatever i usually ask her how school how's everything going and she said something that just threw me for a loop and i felt like i was gonna have this conversation with her sooner or later but i didn't i wasn't prepared for it you know saying it took me off guard because um i'm just gonna read the conversation basically give you a general idea of what happened so she asked her how you know what I'm saying if you're off from school she's like yeah school starts whatever whatever I said how school she said good in some ways and I'm like how so she's like well the school work is okay but the environment is annoying so I'm like okay why what's annoying I'm thinking you know you go to all girls school girls are annoying <laughs> you know saying most of my friends are guys so I can understand that but sh- her response was just like whoa so she says too much noise and the teachers can't control the students because they aren't going to listen plus because it's an all girls school those type of people are there I was like, what are those type of people? In quotations, what are those type of people? And she says, gays. Now, (laughs) I stopped because, like I said before, my father doesn't know that I am bisexual or any kind of queer. Just for the simple fact that my father lives in another country and my whole take on it is, unless I'm in a relationship with a woman or... I mean, it's ignorant. It's my... (laughs) And I also feel like if I come out to my father, he's going to kick me out of his life (laughs) and I can't deal with that right now. So, you know, even though as an adult, I live on my own, I pay my own bills. I don't ask him for anything. It's my dad at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like if I were in a lesbian relationship and I felt like it was serious enough for me to end up going down the aisle or something of the sort or, you know what I'm saying, even moving in together or something, I would have to tell my father about that because that's a serious step. You get me? But these random relationships that I've had, I dated girls here, we're together for a couple months, we're together for a year or two, whatever, I was young. It's not something I talk to him about. I also don't tell him when I'm dating boys. So it's not like I specifically don't tell him about women exclusively. You get me? So it's like... I just don't talk to him about relationships as a whole. Like, it's probably why he still thinks I'm 12. But so she doesn't know that I am bi, obviously. So when she says gays, I was like, <laughs> me being the smart ass that I am, my response is, what does that have to do with you getting an education? She says nothing. So I'm like, what's the problem? She's like, I can't stand them. My poor heart broke a little bit. This I'm just like, you're 13, 13. Like you just turned 13 in December. What do you mean you can't stand them? What? So I'm like, why not? She's like, they're annoying, highly unstable and disgusting. A 13 year old is saying this, that gays, quote unquote, are annoying, highly unstable and disgusting. I want to know where that came from. I'm going to have a conversation deeper than this with her, but due to stipulations, you know, distance, whatever, whatever. 
I want to be able to have a conversation with her one on one with no adults around so I can have a real conversation with her. Because, you know, you can talk to kids in front of their parents and it's going to be a censored conversation. But my my daddy don't know she listened to Alkaline and Cartel and all that stuff. So I'm pretty sure he doesn't know like a lot of things as far as she goes. So her having a real conversation, because I'm pretty sure she cussed and et cetera. But I want to have a real conversation with her sister to sister. Like, listen what's really going on like how are you what is your mindset where are you getting this from because that that touched me because growing up I've I like even though I wasn't in Jamaica for that long I was old enough I was coherent I was you know I was aware of my surroundings and everything and me and my father have had conversations because even as a like child my father me and my father have always had like deep conversations about things that matter so I've never heard my father say anything homophobic Granted, he's a Jamaican man. He lives in Jamaica. The things happen. He hears things. He sees things. But we have never had a conversation about anything LGBTQ related. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know my father's take on it. I know how he feels about white people. I know how he feels about Chinese people. (laughs) I know how he feels about politics. I know how he feels about, you know what I'm saying? Like the economy, everything. We talk shit about the presidents in, in America, all that stuff. But I've never heard him say anything about gays. I don't know if it's because it's something that's not directly affecting him or something that he doesn't have to deal with necessarily. But... I don't know where she's getting this from, if it's school influence, if it's music, if it's at home or whatever the case is. But that just, I'm saying like, that threw me for a loop. So I'm like, do you know any of them personally? And she's like, of course, a lot of them are in my grade. I'm like, okay, but have you had a conversation with them? Have you tried to get to know them? And she's like, yeah, but I just not like talk to them. I'm just like why you know what I'm saying what's are they hitting on you is it something that you know I'm saying you don't <laughs> I I <laughs> I'm literally baffled because the same thing I'm saying like she's 13 and she's saying this like what does this manifest into if she doesn't have the right guidance to say hey you know, it's okay for people to be gay. People can be gay and not be all these disgusting, annoying things that you have in your mind because, like, where did that come from? <laughs> you know what I'm like, where did that come from? That's that's wild to me because, shit, I'm <laughs> fucking gay. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and well, that's one of the things we're going to talk about. Like, after all of that, I'm literally going to be like, okay, as much as you look up to me, as much as you want to talk to me, as much as you want to be involved with my life and have a relationship with me, and we talk and we text and all this, I'm a functioning member of society. Like, I live my life. I take care of myself. I'm not out here doing anything to anybody specifically. I'm not committing any crimes. I'm not doing any of that. And... <laughs> I like girls. <laughs> I love women. You know what I'm saying? There's there's nothing wrong with that. Like I I hope this conversation goes in the direction that I want it to. And even if it doesn't, I hope it comes around. Like I hope she can come around to it. I hope it's I hope it's literally an ignorance of not knowing better rather than something that she's vested in and she's made up her mind on. Because I know we talk about the ignorance all the time, but it hits home for me because it's like, that's my little sister. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When we were kids, like, she low-key could pass for my child at one point. Like, she looked like the spitting image of me. And it's like, when you were raised by the same person, like, my father raised me for the first half of my life. So it's like, where, like, where is this coming from? You get me? Like, I'm, that's my whole thing. Like, where are you getting these thoughts from? Where are you, what started, like, how did this happen? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I feel like I sound like straight parents when their kids tell them that they're gay. Like, oh my God, how did this happen? Are you sure? Did you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I sound ridiculous because I know how the society is. I know how people think. I know, you know what I'm saying? I know all of these things, but at the same time, it's like, I just can't believe it. The facts are there and you know, whatever, but I just want to know like firsthand experience. How did you get to this point? Because, you know, The children of the future. So if she grows up, if I don't come in and like try to make her see things differently, she's going to grow up with this mentality. And it's a mentality that a lot of adults have. Like a lot of people feel this way. A lot of people have genuine dislike for homosexuals because, I mean, look at the world we live in. You know what I'm saying? Like if that weren't the case, 
suicide rates wouldn't be so high. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Homelessness among LGBTQ wouldn't be so high. You know what I'm saying? People wouldn't need to put out scholarships for them for that reason. Like you have a scholarship for people that are specifically LGBTQ. Like that is great on one aspect, but at the same time, it's like, why do they need a scholarship? You know what I'm saying? Because what? You know what I'm saying? They probably don't have family to help them pay for it or something of the sort. You get me? So it's one of the things I just I just really hope this goes in the right direction. And I'm definitely going to keep you guys updated updated when I do have the conversation with her about it. I I don't even know how that's going to go. But <laughs> you know I'm saying that's just one thing. Um, another thing that I that was touching me i saw something about bleaching and i like i said before i don't know if i i think i probably mentioned it on this podcast before but i work in a very caribbean neighborhood and majority of my customers are from the islands like there's a few americans you know what speckled white folks here and there but i see a lot of people that bleach and someone said it's jamaicans that bleach but haitian people bleach too africans bleach a lot of people bleach and i'm light skin i i wish i were chocolate (laughs) but i i don't understand it completely what the fascination is with lighter skin on one end I can understand it because, you know, white people get treated better. Light skinned people supposedly get treated better. There are more opportunities that you're afforded because you're fairer skinned. You're quote unquote less intimidating if you're fair skinned. White people aren't as, you know, intimidated by you or, you know what I'm saying, fearful or anything. It's, e- it's easier accepted. It's quote unquote. But in a society like, living in Jamaica or living in Haiti or living in whatever island it is that you live in and bleaching, especially if it's a predominantly black culture, society and things of that nature, that mentality is very damaging for raising children. Because, I mean, some people that listen to this probably bleach because I follow a few of y'all on Instagram that bleach and that's your business, that's your personal preference. But I personally, I just want to understand the why behind it. Is it for social standard, for social acceptance, or is this something personal? Is this an insecurity? Do you feel ugly because of this? I mean... I saw a few videos of children and they do like social experiments with these kids where they have like the dolls and it's like, you know, show me which one's pretty. And they have a black doll and a white doll and the kid is pointing to the white doll as a black child, as a white child. You know what I'm saying? Or you see these videos on YouTube or World Star or wherever where the kids are like, I'm ugly because I'm black and blah, blah, blah. Or kids that are getting picked on because they're black. And all of that stuff is... <laughs> It's heartbreaking because children are innocent and all of these things are learned behavior. So is it um, an insecurity within yourself? Is it a forced insecurity based on society? What is it? Is it you just want to be light skinned? Is it because cartel did it? Like, what is it? Why? That's such a like. And I can't even say because cartel did it because people were bleaching from long before cartel. And you know what I'm saying? And it's just, I mean, like even living in Brooklyn, I lived in Brooklyn for a little bit and I used to see a lot of people bleaching on Flatbush, like, and you'll see them like just (laughs) out and about and that's it. But it's like, why is that such a normal thing, quote unquote? Like I have family that bleach, like not, you know what I'm saying, biological that I know, but like people that, you know, you grow up with people, they call them family, whatever. But I've never sat down and asked anyone, but I just thought about it. And I'm just like, why do y'all do this? Like, first of all, that is damaging to your skin. You don't know what these chemicals are. The fact that you can't even lay down on your sheets when you bleach because it's going to mess up your sheets. Like, that's crazy. And the the thing tell you it can't go in your eye. You can't eat it. This is a toxic material. Like, it's toxic chemicals that you're putting on your skin to lighten it. Like, you're diminishing the pigment in your skin for what you know what i'm saying and then you have kids and your kids come out chocolate what are you gonna tell them <laughs> you know what i'm saying are you gonna tell your children that they should bleach too like how do you teach your children to love themselves if 
you're doing this to yourself. You get me? Like, and that's one of the things about this podcast. It's about like, it's not about y'all old, tusty, roasted ass niggas. Like, I really, <laughs> y'all are great. Learn something cool, but it's really for kids and like learning something and like, learning to accept yourself and just loving who you are as a person, whether you're LGBTQ, whether you're straight, whatever it is. But the concentration on this podcast is specifically for Caribbeans that are LGBTQ. I I want people to understand that just because like you know what I'm saying you feel different or whatever, like accept yourself. Whether you're dark, whether you're light, whether you're mixed, whether whatever the case is, like just you know what I'm saying, just accept yourself for who you are. So like the whole bleaching thing to me is is wild. Like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I, I don't understand. I mean, y'all listening, if y'all have some insight, y'all can send me, y'all have me on Instagram or Twitter, or whichever, just shoot me a message, let me know. You can comment under this on SoundCloud or on Apple Podcasts, whichever, wherever you're listening to it. Because that's a real question that I have. Like, I really want to know why people bleach. Like, what is the reason? If you bleach and you have some answers, shoot me a message too if you want to cuss me for talking about it i mean you can do that too i'm you know saying i'm open to it but i just really want to know i mean it's just wild to me but um again i just want to give a big shout out to trinidad you know saying the the whole the law being passed i'm backtracking right now but the law being passed that just reminds me of the gay agenda manifesto because literally that was a <laughs> as a jamaican that was the first thing i thought of when i saw it and i was like Bahama, clap. yo we next <laughs> you know what i'm saying but that was i was excited like i was genuinely excited i'm not from trinidad i've never been to trinidad you know what i'm saying but i was genuinely excited when i saw that like i was on twitter and i follow quite a few lgbtq people a lot of people are in trinidad all over the caribbean and when i saw it because they were they were in court for a bit talking about it you know going through delegations and everything and waiting for an outcome and when that when that showed up on my time i was like wait a minute i was like no 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 let me go online and check this for real because y'all y'all play with me right now right like this y'all playing right now i legit went online and i saw articles and i was just like yes you know what i'm saying like that is huge okay like that's huge the government is acknowledging that it is okay for you to participate in sex as you see fit basically like you want to turn around and do some little butt sex that's your business you know what i'm saying like that's how i take it like you can do whatever you do in your bedroom and you will not be penalized for it. And my thing is, Jamaica, will we get there soon? Like, how long is it going to take? What is it going to take for us to get there? What has to happen for us to get rid of that law in Jamaica? For those, like I said, if you haven't listened to any previous episodes, it's the buggery law. It basically banishes anal sex. That's what the law is. That's all it entails. Like, <laughs> banishes anal sex. So two men, that's it. You can't have sex. <laughs> it's illegal. Basically saying being gay in Jamaica and all these other countries that have this law in place, it's illegal, which is absolutely crazy. It's bad enough they can't get married, but you can't have sex either. Like, get out their bedrooms. But that was just, that was a big thing for me. I'm just waiting for the day I can see that for Jamaica because that's that's big like i said earlier trinidad and tobago is a huge caribbean island is one of the more prominent ones that people know of so the fact that they have you know what I'm saying outlawed that 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 law does not exist anymore i feel like that is setting the path for others to fall in place and i hope i genuinely hope that that's where this goes i hope that that's what happens and i hope that the people in the country don't take it upon themselves to do something about this law being legal because of their hatred you get me like because the law is the law but people break laws all the time and i just i really honestly genuinely just i just want this to be something good like i want something good to come from this like that's one step in the right direction and i just hope that there are more steps like this you know so big up to trinidad and everyone else that made this happen so there's that and um we're gonna wrap this up 
Um, please don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Pointless Talks. Subscribe on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts on um, yeah, Apple Podcasts. <laughs> um, if you like us, rate us, give us five stars, and as usual, whether you got here on purpose. Or-